Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with banana bread pancakes. That's right, they say a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And it reminds me of a lesser known proverb, and that's that a batch of banana bread pancakes begins with a single overripe banana, which is exactly what inspired this video. And by the way, if you're a fan of our banana bread, then you're gonna love these since it's based on that recipe. And as easy as that is to make, these are even easier. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by mixing up our dry ingredients, which are pretty much standard for any kind of pancake, and include some white all-purpose flour, some salt, some baking powder, and some baking soda. And then once all that's in there, we'll take a whisk and give this a mix until everything is thoroughly combined. And then once that's set, we'll just set it aside and move on to the wet ingredients, which will begin with one very, very ripe banana. All right, one where not only the outside is getting dark, but the inside is also very soft. And as you can see here, part of the inside is turning color as well, which is not the most beautiful thing ever. But for banana bread or banana bread pancakes, that's exactly what we want. And what we'll do is take a potato masher and mash this down into a paste. And while an almost black banana is recommended here, as long as your banana is fully ripe and you're able to mash it fairly smooth, it should still work for this recipe. But anyway, like I said, we will mash that very smooth, at which point we'll go ahead and toss in one large whole egg along with a little touch of white sugar. And then what we'll do is grab our whisk and give this a thorough mixing for about two minutes or so, or until basically that sugar is dissolved and we have a nice smooth, creamy, frothy mixture. And then to that we will add a splash of milk, as well as some real pure vanilla extract. And sometimes if you're smiling at your food, it will actually smile back. Hello, vanilla. And then we'll finish this batter up with some melted butter some fairly finely chopped walnuts, and then our previously put together dry ingredients. And then very important, we're gonna take our whisk and mix this until it just comes together. And what that means is as soon as you see that flour disappear, you can give it one or two more stirs, but then you gotta stop. Otherwise, at that point, you might be over mixing. And that's something you wanna be conscious of as soon as you start to mix, since it's very easy to space out and just keep stirring for like another 15 seconds after all that flour has been incorporated. Okay, so for the tenderest pancakes possible, just as soon as this batter comes together, we're gonna stop. And then we're gonna let it rest for 10 minutes before we use it, which will give our flour a little bit of time to hydrate and for our baking soda and baking powder to activate. So that's what I did. And about 10 minutes later, my batter looked like this. And that's it, we can head to the stove where I have a generously buttered pan set over medium high heat. And I'm gonna go ahead and transfer in enough batter to make three. And by the way, this one banana sized recipe will probably make about six pancakes this size. Although as they say, your results may vary. But anyway, I transferred in about half my batter. And once we do, what we'll do is reduce our heat to medium. And we'll cook that first side for about three minutes or so, and then flip them over. But we cannot, should not, will not go by time. Okay, but it's much more accurate is going by what we see. And what we're looking for is the outside edges of the pancake to start looking a little bit dry. As well as, and more importantly, small air bubbles will start popping up through the surface. All right, you see those? And when that happens, it means it's officially time to flip your pancakes, which I will attempt to carefully do in this probably a little bit too small pan. And by the way, if you're keeping score at home, that did take about three minutes. But again, forget about the time. Only believe the bubbles. Okay, so figuring out when to flip is going to be up to you. I mean, you are after all the Craig Mack of when to flip your banana flapjack. Oh, and speaking of flavor in your ear, one off-the-record suggestion if you want these a little more decadent is before you flip them, you can sprinkle on a little bit of chopped dark chocolate, which of course is the secret ingredient in our famous banana bread recipe, in case you're in the mood for something a little more desserty. And then however long the first side took, we'll give that second side roughly the same amount of time, at which point we'll go ahead and plate up, just like they tell you how to do it in the food blogger handbook. So I went ahead and stacked my cakes, and added a little extra slice of butter to the top, because why not? And then if you want as a garnish, if you happen to have a ripe, but not too ripe banana, we can go ahead and dress this up with a few slices, which not only looks nice, but it gives our guests a little heads up about what they're getting into. And then I decided to serve mine with some warm maple syrup. And please do not pour it over too fast, because it's so beautiful. Okay, so savor the sight and enjoy the moment. And then for a final touch, I added one more pinch of chopped walnuts. And that's it, my banana bread pancakes were ready to enjoy. And that, my friends, if you enjoy banana bread and pancakes, is just going to be an incredible bite of food. 
All right, I really think this recipe threads the needle between something that has the flavor of banana bread, yet very close to the texture of a classic pancake. All right, what we don't want to do is just fry some banana bread batter and call it pancakes, nor do we want to make regular pancakes that are just banana flavored. And this is neither. So I really do love how this recipe comes out. And I just used them as a garnish. But for a little more filling meal, feel free to slice over a whole banana, as these pancakes are very nice eaten alongside of the fresh fruit. And by the way, I have no idea why I'm trying to eat these stacked. Okay, that was just for the pictures. I generally like to eat my pancakes one at a time. So let me keep it real and show you how I would actually eat these. Oh yeah, that's better. But anyway, that's it. How I like to make banana bread pancakes. Whether you're trying to disappear a rapidly blackening banana, or you're just about to head out on a thousand mile journey, and you want a delicious hearty breakfast before taking that first step. Either way, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.